Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the improving uh, developer experience using GraphQL. Actually, we should improve the experience using, you know, presenting a slide, I mean, uh, doing a session on a really light room. And so my name is kind of blurry. So my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas. You can find me as JM Olivas all over the place. I'm founder of uh, agencies called Optihedroid. Mm, we are a professional, professional service agency. We focus on, on modern front end tools and CMS integrations. We also do a lot of uh, automation and cloud native architectures. We always try to run away from Drupal. I was getting back to Drupal somehow. I think that was the story of my life. We left Drupal at some point, then Drupal 8 announced Symphony. At that point, I was moved to Symphony, and I figured out, you know, now I can probably go back. And then I created the Drupal console project, and then, yeah, that brings me back to Drupal and Drupal 8. And then I was like, I used to have another company, and then I decided to start a new company, and we're gonna focus in like front, front you know, modern front end tools, in automation, and all that. Jumping into the Jamstack world, trying to like fully decouple you know, using different CMSs, and then we'll always get back to Drupal. <laughs> and it's for a reason because it's, it's great at doing content, you know, structured content, and it's great for building websites. We have tried like all probably all the other like, headless CMSs. We will see like getting back to Drupal at some point. And but what we'll learn from the other projects is they they just have to be able to expose to their API. And this is something we want to bring in, into Drupal because then you know, Drupal has JSON API on core, and it's great. But the developer experience with um, but GraphQL, we think it's better, and we really focus on developer experience. You know, same thing happened on Drupal console. You know, Drupal 8, it was created, was released, and it was really, really hard to create something. Creating a module, creating a controller, a routing, everything, a form, it was so complicated, so we decided to start this. And also, and the reason was the developer experience. We want to have, providing great developer experience for our teams and for other people using Drupal. And same thing with, with this, which we are trying to do the same thing right now, but now with, with GraphQL. You know, it's like, again, there's nothing wrong with JSON API. It's a great tool, but we think the developer experience is kind of better. And before jumping into the topic, so what's, what's developer experience here? So developer experience describes the experience of people have when using a product. In this case, the product is Drupal, right? And, and it really, really matters and really matters the same way that user experiences, you know. And on Drupal, it's also not the best <laughs> on, on, on user experience or editorial experiences, you know, it's always, it's great for doing all the, uh, again, data structure, and it's for extending, and, and you know, the, the uh, contributor spaces and, the, you know, the uh, ecosystem is great, but then, will, you know, the editorial experience is kind of, you lack something, you know, even if, even if you compare with other projects, you know, like for a little more than that, but again, as I mentioned, I've been jumping into using like all the others, you know, like Contentful, Sanity, Graph CMS, all the others, and those tools provide a great an editorial experience and great developer experience, but they like a lot, a lot of the features that you can have out of the box by doing, out of the box or by adding custom modules. And finally, when your users are happy with your product, guess what, they're going to use that. They're going to, and in this case, your clients are gonna use that and ask for more Drupal sites. And yep, then, so what, what and why? No? What about what GraphQL? Well, what is, GraphQL is a query language for your API. Um, what, couple of the benefits of GraphQL is you can ask only for what you need. Think about this, when you have a resource on, on Drupal, uh, you know, a node with gazillions of files, what it happens when you request or on a REST, you know, REST endpoint or JSON API endpoint, you ask for that resource and all of the fields came on the response, right? You know, like 20, 50, whatever fields. And, and not only that, if you need to ask for references, then you need to start like, you know, having the includes and all that. So it's like, it's either you have the whole of the research, all of the properties from the root entity or model, and then if you want to, then you need to like do something different, you know, like include this, that, that. And, you know, and, and having the, writing those queries is a little complicated probably. And with GraphQL, 
it's a little different. So whenever you have a resource or a, a model or a type, and you only want a couple of fields, you just type those, and that's what you get. If you need a reference, you can use reference name, you know, that something, or you know, curly bracket something, and that came out of the box. Obviously, that depends on how your graph field was created, but in the end, it's, you can ask for what you want and only that, and get exactly that. And finally, you can describe the shape of the data that you are querying. You know, I want this type, or I want this pro property for this type, yada yada. It also provides you with a great um, introspection, so it means you can ask the API, you know, what, how is this built? How the type, what the types are, what the definition of those, those types are. You can ask to that, you know, which queries do you have, which mutation do you have, and basically there is something called Explorer on the GraphQL side of things. I want to show you how this looks like, if we can see, and it shows you all of the fields, again, the properties and the queries and mutations, and and there's also something called Docs, which is like documenting, it's like self-documenting API. So it's it's pretty cool that you know because probably we like to write code. Probably we're not that great at graphic documentation. That helps a lot in the GraphQL side of things. And what about the GraphQL ecosystem? Um, what is this developer experience? I mean, it gets better with this. There is something called, there are a couple of projects, I'm just gonna mention three of them. GraphQL, which is a like an IDE for your for your GraphQL. You can jump into that and start typing your, you know, types, your queries, and all that, and everything. And you will be able to to query your your endpoints. There's another, probably like more like like GraphQL on, you know, on on improved a little little more advanced, which is called GraphQL Playground, which is it's a similar thing. Funny thing about those two projects and, and GraphQL, you can start typing and autocomplete, it's out of the box, so you don't need to know which properties you're looking for. You start something like title, a T, and then autocomplete for, for, for that, and that's great. That gives you a lot of like um, speed while you're working or starting to work with an API. And if you want to have all the autocomplete, autocompletion, and if you want to have all those queries in your, in your code base, you can do that. There is a project called code, GraphQL Code Generator. It's a CLI that you run, and just that CLI reads the uh, metadata definition, or do the uh, like GraphQL introspection on your API, and downloads all that on your system. So you can have all that in your VS Code project, and you can have all the auto completion there on your code base. So basically, you don't need to guess how the queries are named, how the types are named. That allows you to download all of the objects as type objects. You can say either TypeScript or JavaScript, so basically, you can get all the data, all the definition in your code base without doing nothing other than running a CLI. So basically, all that is in your code base. So you're going to start using that right away. And how about the Drupal and GraphQL ecosystem? And this is where things start getting a little not funny. You know about Drupal? And how about this? So getting a little back in the past, the version three of, of GraphQL in, in Drupal, out of the box, exposed with queries and mutations and all that, but probably was exposing way too much that you really needed, right? So every single content type, field, and property was there. The naming convention was kind of clunky because you know Drupal field underscores something, right? And then it's it's kind of like whenever you you need to do something on. On JSON API, something, relation, something else, relation again, and then something else and relation again. You know, think about that, but, uh, but mostly on, on the GraphQL side of things, it was also the way the relations were generated it was a little, mm. and then it wasn't really, really attached to the GraphQL spec, and that was really stopping us from, at least as a company, us, like using that version. It was like, it, do, it was doing the job, but probably was not doing like properly attached to the GraphQL spec. It doesn't include yeah, like UUID, things like that, that really, really you need it if you really want to take advantage of, of GraphQL. It doesn't have like queries per content type. It wasn't like node queries or something where you say type article, type page. You don't have this like uh, idiomatic queries that can help you to, to build things easily. But it, was, it, it works, right, out of the box. And then one, once version two was released, it, you know, the code base, it's, it's, it's great. It's more like a foundation of core of tools. Basically, allowed you to build things on top of that. But 
but unfortunately, nothing, none of the automatic queries, typing, mutation was, was there. So basically, you installed the GraphQL module, and as usual in Drupal, congratulations, you have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, we, we take a look at the code base. We really like the way it was built. It provides you with something they call data producers, which allow you to pull data from the CMS and, 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 and have that um, exposed on, 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 your, on your system. But again, for, unfortunately, you have to write a lot of code. And then we get to the point like, should we write code generators for this? Do we really want to get back to you know, the Drupal console thing like 10 years ago? And like, probably, or probably not. Probably if we only want to focus on a universe of people who's like really confident on the CLI, which is happy running into the terminal and typing things, because we all love like, mechanical keyboards, right? And we like to typing things, but not everyone is like that. And then at that, at that point, if we work on that, because we, we would think about it, it's like, then you need to run a command that is gonna read you know, the data, you know, Drupal, uh, introspect Drupal definition, content types, whatever, and then create files, and now you need to commit those files in your repo, and you know, create a pull request, and send to a project, then having a continuous integration, continuous delivery system that run all the build and deploy to you. Lucky if you have that, because most of the people doesn't have a lot of that, I mean, unless you are using something like Pantheons or whatever, you know, those kind of systems, or you have your own created, you know, with GitHub Actions or whatever. But then, we decided, you know, that is go we're going to limit the amount of people that really can take advantage of this. And we really want to make this a product that people really, really um, uh, embrace and, and use that. So we decided to go in the other direction, kind of follow what version G was doing, enabling the module, and boom, everything is there. So this is where, where the uh, GraphQL Compose module uh, was, was created. The reason is, is really take advantage of the GraphQL for core foundations and allow you to expose all the typing and queries and all that. And uh, really, really important note here, uh, when we started working on this project, it was a lot of work that needed to be done because you know there's a lot of code to write. And then I find out there is an excellent project called Open Social. I don't know if any of you are aware of that. It's a, distribution or I don't know if they're still called the same in Drupal like distributions or profiles or whatever. And that project, it was exposing GraphQL and they have a great API. So I contact them, I contact uh, Alexander, which is, uh, I don't know if you have met him. Um, he was, he's one of the maintainers and I contact him and you know, you, we're, I'm working on this. You guys are happy if I can use somehow steal <laughs> most of your code. You know, this is open source. And have it in our module, and then we only write the grappers and the data introspection of Drupal, and make that, obviously we make changes in that code to make like more, you know, friendly to interact with. And again, instead of writing code generators and creating files on the fly and all that, we do that, all that on, on boot time. We understand Drupal very well, so we introspect content types, paragraphs, taxonomy, we extract field definitions, we know the types of that, and then you, we use that code as, you know, as Drupal plugins, yada, 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 and we expose and create this schema, all those type definitions, and expose this GraphQL API. So again, a lot of the code on this project, it's based, inspire, inspire, and copy paste it from that project. <laughs> but they are, they are very, they are happy to. Mm. And we can define the Drupal GraphQL Compose as a toolkit to generate GraphQL schemas. And, the, and also the name, it's GraphQL Compose. The name is also inspired on a, graph, on a, on a, on a JavaScript project that it's called GraphQL Compose and allow you to do the same thing. You know, like it allows you to create a schemas and type definitions. So basically this project is an inspiration of other projects because this is how open source works. And we love, you know, how other people take advantage of all other people work. And again, the main goal of this project is provide you with the GraphQL API, API, which is basically GraphQL spec compliant. We really want to make sure we did that compliant. The reason for that is when we have this spec compliant, then we can have this work with other systems. You know, we can um, 
have this used with other projects. We can like easily um, work and, and having, since we have a single UUID, we can implement ways to purging caching and all that. So again, we really want to make sure that was GraphQL spec compliant. And uh, so this is what we got. And the, one of the main goals, it was to improve that developer experience in Drupal as well, you know, provide you with the right tools to do the job, make your life easy and enjoyable, right? Mm. And how this project works. So this project uh, provides or create a new GraphQL for matter plugin. So basically it creates you this plugin and this plugin contains the definition of the data producers that can take advantage of the pooling data from Drupal. So basically it provides you with plugin or allows you to have great, great plugins that you know, I want to use this data producer, these other data producers, and those data producers uh, contain the code to pull data from Drupal. Basically like the resolvers. This is how you, you know, if you want to talk about GraphQL lingo, this is the resolvers. Mm. Which is, and that's, our, that, that's already there. So basically again, introspect all the data, Drupal definition of content types, currently supported as content types, paragraphs, uh, taxonomies. We're working on having views and other things. But again, this is there. But unfortunately, it exposed probably way too much data, right? And you don't want to do that, you know. And even if you don't have to query that, that you can save obviously all those, all those, I mean, all those like back and forth from your server, but it's still exposing that data. So there are things that you can do, like put your, you know, your API behind a simple OAuth, which is re I heavily re recommended. You don't have to have your API publicly available. You don't want to. But again, it also exposes way too much data. And the naming convention is kind of clunky and Drupal. So we are working on a graphical interface for this. And that graphical interface, think about us. Again, we're using inspiration, JSON API extras. You know, you can go to a content type, you know, click, click, click thing, you know, enable, disable fields, renaming fields. Out of the box, it just name things like node article, node something, or paragraph something else. We, we, did, we decide to go that route to avoid naming collision, but it will be up to you. You will be able to go to one page and say, you know, I want to name this article. I want to like remove the Drupal lingo from here and just rename article. And uh, we get rid of the field underscore something where the fields are only named as the field name, really. Again, so again, but you will be able to go there and change that. And out of the box, it detect the field types, the field type of the, of your, you know, content type definitions and uh, default to a particular uh, data producer, but you will be able to go there and change that. So I mean, you will be able to bring your own data producer. If you want to format data differently, you want to change how things are presented, you will be able to do that. Kind of like JSON API handlers, handlers or handlers, I don't know how the name is, something like that. Again, you will be able to change how you expose data. Can I think about those uh, GraphQL formatters, like your, you know, like field formatters, but in this case at the API level. And, Again, we'll be able, and also I, under development, it's the capability to support that, you know, being provided, I mean, using any other like data providers. When you have the, the graphical interface, it's, you will be able to do that, bring your own data providers, or maybe using an external module, you know, like maybe you have your own country module that provide those data providers, you go to the graphical interface and change that and that's it. And, but what, what is the plan already? So again, what I mentioned currently, it just introspect all the Drupal data, expose that, yada, yada, yada. And what is planned support for views, because you know, views is a really heavily module and allow you to query a thing, you know, using this drag and drop clicking thinking thing. So we want to provide support for that. Uh, we want support for custom fields by using those custom plugins for data producers. And uh, finally, support for write actions are also known as mutations. Currently, it's only queries are supported, so you only can query data and fetch data from Drupal, but you will be able to have mutations. It means you will be able to write back to Drupal. So it means it allows you to write your own custom application, not only, because uh, most of the, the ways we use, like or people use like Drupal as a CMS, all the, day, all the you know, data manipulation happens at the, at the Drupal you know, entry form, and then expose the data and use like either Next or Gaffy or whatever to pull data and show those pages. But what if you want to really build like a fully decoupled application, not only a site that shows data, then that's why mutation will be in there, so you will be able to use those to push back data to Drupal. 
Mm. How to use that? Well, Compose and Require, Drupal GraphQL Compose, SQL in beta. You need to make sure, even if you cannot see on screen, you need to change the minimum stability to that on your Composer JSON file because the module is on beta. But you know, it's Drupal beta. It's kind of like, you know, Dev, and Dev is kind of like prod on Drupal A. <laughs> we all know that. Uh, it's, it's, it only worked, I think it worked with Drupal 9 and up because I think I don't know, 8 is already end of life or something, but we, because of the dependencies we have on the project, I think we're forcing to have 9 on that. And if you are on Drupal 8, you need to make sure you move to, migrate to Drupal 9. It's, it's, it's not a nightmare anymore, you know, like moving from 6 to 7, you know, it's like whenever you need to move to 6 to 7, by the time you finish moving, migrating to 7, now 8 was out and you need to migrate to 8, you know, you know, remember that, that those times, C5 to 6, 6 to 7, it was kind of like a little complicated. But now, unfortunately, from 8 to 9 and 9 to 10, it shouldn't be that hard, it's more like, Code deprecations, things like you shouldn't be doing, like not injecting, you know, dependencies on your code, like using the static, you know, Drupal something something. Yeah, yeah, okay. Obviously, ideally you shouldn't be doing that. But if you are still doing that, well, all of that code should be deprecated. And the way you some services are named on the, you know, on the uh, on Drupal or are changing. But yeah, shouldn't be that a big of a problem. So yeah, Drupal nine. And let's see this video. This is how it looks like. So I'm gonna play the video. So basically this is GraphQL. So this is the place where you can start typing queries on the Explorer side of things. You can see all of the queries and, and types already listed on the system. So I, I can go to this, yeah, the GraphQL query thing. And you start typing like node articles, you know, first 10, typing ID, title, and then hit run and the result is right here, like right away. Again, I don't have to do nothing other than start typing and auto completion, it's here. But then, you know, this can start getting complicated. In this case, I go, I, you know, type author and then give, get the name from the nested property without doing nothing other than typing author, curly bracket, and then start typing the properties within that nested object. So again, all that is already out of the box from here. Like no includes, no nothing. <laughs> But it is kind of hard, you know, it's typing things is kind of hard. And then what we end up doing here, so we provide with this tab at the very bottom, you know, where the explorer and server are on the GraphQL screen, where it's, that is called fragments. If you go there, it's gonna happen in a few minutes, in a few seconds, it's gonna happen. Well, again, what is showing here are the documentation is telling you which types are, you know, nodes, which fields, which types are there. Again, remember what I told you about, like, self-documented API? So everything is there, again, out of the box. You have to do nothing other than enabling the module. Mm -hmm. But again, might be typing things a little, a little harder. So what's, what's going to happen next is instead of typing every single property because maybe you are lazy or maybe you want to have a better developer experience, what's gonna happen, the module provides you with a tab that is called fragments. And basically fragments are like snippets of code, which is basically the snippets of your type definitions of the types on your system that you can go copy paste it instead. So again, I'm typing again, you know, like node articles or node pages, I don't know what's typing. It's node pages, so it's pulling all of the pages on the system. No articles, you know, first whatever, I think first 10 or something. I cannot see the screen. <laughs> and, uh, in, I'm close and I cannot see it. So, so this is not a great developer experience, you know. <laughs> this is not a great conference experience. But again, but if you don't want to type all those things like by hand, again, you can go fragments. Yeah, fragments. And in, in this page, Every single type definition is registered. Every single type definition on this of this on the system. So you can go here, copy. So every single like type definition, paragraph definition, like no definition, taxonomy, whatever user, whatever like media, link, all of the types on the system. So you can go here, copy, paste it back on the GraphQL Explorer, on the GraphQL app playground, and and use that. You know, you're gonna paste it at the very top of the screen, and scroll down, yada yana, and then instead of typing field by field, I will use the, the 
dot, 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 fragment name notation, and boom, all the data is gonna come. In all the data that is already on the system. So I didn't have to do anything other than using the fragments already generated by the, by the, system, by the uh, module, and it's all here in all the data, all the nested properties. Again, you can remove from those fragments what you don't need it, what you don't want it, or you can create like user something fragment. You, instead of having a single like user with all the fields, you can have like user, you know, like view modes, you know, like, like node teaser, like node full or node whatever, yeah? So you can think about that. Like, so again, we're trying to get the same ideas and inspiration, like teaser, create that. And again, this is a little explanation of how those fragments are set. You can see there is like language fragment or language field, which is pointing to a language fragment. So instead of having all the field definition here, you have it on the fragment, and you can reuse that code all over the place. You can create fragments to reuse all over your application. You can, you can have author, you can have all these, you know, like paragraphs. In the, in the case of paragraph, you have a field that is called components that contain all those paragraphs. That field definition is created as a GraphQL union. It means to be, can, can expose data from different types. It's not like it's only this type, it could be like, you know, hero, CTA, hero text, image, whatever, or like code snippet, whatever. I will have a training tomorrow, Gatsby and GraphQL, where you can see how this works. Hopefully, we have a more darker room. <laughs> and well, a little more example how this works. Like, you know, language property is pointing to that, that, that language, which is I meaning it's called in the fragment, and the fragment definition is, is, is defined here. So okay, fragment contains the type definition. And as I mentioned, you can have different fragment types as view modes that you can reuse across your system and decide what you want to expose. Mm. Another benefit of GraphQL is data introspection that allow you to query things, you know, like and understand what's happening and what's on the system at a red register. But during that data, it's kind of complicated because the way it's shown on the system, it's in a way that a machine can understand that because you know, computer code should be understandable by by computers. But yeah, but in the end, you know, we want to have something like simple. And we decided to expose a new query called GraphQL Compose Information that expose data. It expose data from your content tab. You know, the content tab, it's called, or, you know, it's entities node, the bundle is article, or it's page, and it tells you what the type definition on the system. You know, article is of type node article. Article has this query plural that's called node article. So it means it's exposing you data from the, or metadata from the uh, GraphQL, so you can have, you can take advantage of this data and build applications. So it means I can query this and then programmatically create a crude application because I already know which query do I need to use for Pluto. It means for getting like multiple elements. I know which query that I, need, I need to use for singular, like no article, it's a single one. So it means it receives a UUID. So again, I can take advantage of all this definition and use other, other tools, what? <laughs> Now it's not refreshing. Really? Yeah. So you can take advantage of, advantage of that metadata and use and use that to create something like this called there's something called SOT. It's a project, C O T, and, and it allows you to create SOT SOT objects. So you can use that metadata, create those objects, which is basically like you know like TypeScript objects that you can use on your on your application. So you can take advantage of that metadata, you know, this is a article which contains these fields. Those fields are of this particular type. So you can basically iterate that data and create your objects on the fly in your system. And you can, you know, save you from a lot of time of writing and typing all that. And similar to what I was mentioning about the GraphQL, you know, general code generator, but in this case, you can you can define the shape of the objects, which how do you want to generate those? And the benefit of using something like SAW is you can interact with other tooling, you know, like you know, like React Hook Forms or Remix Forms. We use we do a lot of we do a lot of Remix work lately. So you can do that. You can use Remix Forms and use and use pass the SAW object that you just created, and you know, you will you will be able to render. You will be able to render those forms and fields. Once once we have the mutations ready. You will you will be able to have those mutations as action actions on your forms and post data back to Drupal. So you know it feels like we're rebuilding form API in JavaScript, but at some points I have seen a lot of projects going to the couple route trying to do the same thing. Because people is like not really happy with 
some editorial experiences, I mean, experiences in Drupal. So again, some customers are asking for that. So we're trying to figure out if there's a better way. Mm -hmm. And finally, you can also download the GraphQL fragment. You know, the one that I show you on the screen. So you don't have to go to that screen and copy paste it. You can run this query, copy from it, or just implement something on your CLI that execute this query and pull that data and just put it in your system so you don't have to write things. You know, sometimes it's easy to, easier to automate something, spending like a day automating something that takes you like five minutes to do. Uh, and well, the module, it's called I mean, Drupal GraphQL Compose, a stable release, hopefully it's gonna happen on Q1, 2000, you know, next year. We were trying to accomplish something like by the end of this year, unfortunately, life, you know, happened. And there's, a, I mean, we have a, some other projects and work to do, so we aren't able to like allocate enough resources. If you are interested to contribute to the project, ping me, let me know. Again, it's not refreshing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and, and once we build the GraphQL you know, module, we decided, why don't we just try this ourselves? So we decided to work, and we do a lot of Gatsby work, and a lot of the Gatsby projects are working in, you know, with JSON API, you know, the GraphQL source, <coughs> Drupal, Gatsby source, Drupal, Gatsby source, Drupal, plugin from Gatsby, it uses JSON API, so we decided, one, why don't we just create a new source plugin? So we decided to create this Gatsby source Drupal GraphQL plugin that, that pulls data from Drupal of data and media images, all that, in exactly what JSON, Drupal, well, well, JSON API do, and pull data from Drupal 9 site using the GraphQL Compose module, and it also supports like incremental changes in your code base, and this plugin allow you to build Gatsby sites on top of, of Drupal using GraphQL, obviously npm install, Gatsby source, Drupal, GraphQL, Gatsby source, Drupal, GraphQL plugin. And unfortunately, you cannot see here, but this is the plugin configuration. And currently, the module supports simple OAuth authentication, so you don't have to like expose your API open publicly. So you can put that behind an authentication just by enabling the simple OAuth module. If you do that, you have your credentials, you have your credentials as EMB variables on your build system, and that will be logging into your system, getting a token back, and we'll use that token for upcoming all, all the, every single request on, during the building process. Mm -hmm. It also supports um, like token authentication. You can generate that token yourself and just pass it instead of doing that. But again, the problem with that is you end up generating a token with no expiration date, and that is not totally secure. You should be doing that probably. And obviously, um, the token that you generate is based on a user, password, so it means you need to be careful about which access or that which role that user has access to. So again, basically just create a new role, something like editor role, and you know, enable whatever have access to and access to the executing GraphQL queries, and then use those credentials. That's that will be the simple way to do that. And have another video. Let's see if you can see that. So again, this is a Gatsby site. As you can see, we're gonna see how the incremental changes work. So I, the Drupal site has the uh, build hooks module installed. So it means I'm gonna go to my Drupal site, change something and a paragraph. This is a Gatsby site. That's a Drupal site, you know, changing things, you know, no form, editing something changing something and feel a different field from different paragraph. Then it's gonna hit save. Nothing happens because it's not I mean it's not rebuilding on every side and every saving. It's not configured like that. At this very moment we're gonna see I can go to the uh, build hooks uh, page and then trigger the build by clicking the action at the very bottom. And it's gonna happen, you know, it's showing me which change, what changes are in the system. It's the right on the right side of the Gatsby side. So once I click the, uh, the, you know, the build, this is pinging back Gatsby, and you will see, yep, and it changed. So Gatsby can see those changes immediately. So again, you don't have to reveal your site or, you know, or like having your site fetching all the data all over again, because you have those 
like incremental changes and enable. Again, in order to do that, you need to have the uh, build hooks module on Drupal and then use enable in incremental changes through option on your Gatsby plugin. Um, a little about how the module was built. Remember what I mentioned about this query that we, where we expose content types and fields and all that type definition? Well, we, we take advantage of that on these Gatsby plugins. Uh, Basically, the plugin is just a few lines of code because it's taking advantage of all the metadata coming from, from the Drupal side. So again, it's basically like iteration of those types definition, and that creates the proper Gatsby code to register those types in Gatsby and all that, like again, out of the box. Again, we're really taking advantage of that developer experience that we are providing by using the GraphQL module. Mm. Same thing for the plugin idea to have this plugin um, somehow stable by early next year. And remember what I've been thinking of talking about, about you know how we really focus on developer experience. But something we some another topic that we really care is editorial experiences because on Drupal that's kind of hard. Uh, and then we are working on a module that is called Drupal Composable. It's also taking advantage of this GraphQL thing and yada yada yada. But allow you to have this drag and drop React components on the on the node edit page, right? So basically, you can take advantage of your React components and embed those on the node edit page, so you, you can see them immediately while you are editing a node. Mm. It means you can reuse your React component, you can reuse your mapping from your data to React components as well. And this looks something like this. Uh, for uh, this very moment, is using GraphQL Compose. Part it supports paragraph or custom block types. It also support it, it's obviously provided with a graphical interface to do that. It's it's taking advantage of layout paragraphs. I don't know if you are familiar with the module. Um, we are somehow taking advantage of the module, but not like not, we don't use that for layout purposes. We use for that for stacking components, like full components, one and stacking each other. We don't really want to use paragraphs to define layout. We really want to use paragraphs for define data and structure. And that paragraph itself contains all the definitions they need to in that full st stackable component. It's kind of like building block, you know, like those Lego blocks. You can do that. Um, we're also thinking about maybe we can fully decouple and get rid of layout paragraph and use a, embed a full React application on node edit. And that's why we're working on mutations on the GraphQL side of things. And that looks like this. So basically, you know, go to a Drupal site, edit the node, and you can see this. This is rendering React components. So we're no longer we're not using tweak here. So you edit content, and what you have is this little, you know, like drag and drop components. So you can go and drag things all, I mean, all over the place. You know, like get this one, move up or move down, and you can edit those. Once you edit those the uh, off canvas screen show up on the on the right side of the screen here and you can start editing and typing changing the content on that particular paragraph and what you hit save it's going to refresh the react component that you have on the left so again it providing you with this you know live you know, interaction in immediate like you can see immediately can you see you change the image on, on the form and gets immediately refreshed on your react component so again you can get a full benefit of this, you can really take advantage of reusing your React components inside your Drupal node edit page. Mm. And that module, some point, again, next year, I don't, I don't think Q1 is realistic at this point. Q2, Q3, something like that. It will depend, it all depends. And well, we are all, again, again. refreshing again, in, yeah. As I mentioned, we do a lot of remix work. We do a lot of remix work uh, with, for building like dashboards and apps um, and you know systems. So we really want to take advantage of Drupal to expose a GraphQL thing, you know, having mutations, and then using remix for for building apps on top of, of Drupal. And we're working on a remix. I mean, again, remix um, integration. You know, initial release will be Q1. It won't be a stable at all. A stable will be like Q3, Q4 next year. We hope so. But again, you will be able to really take full advantage of Remix. Remix is a uh, like node JavaScript framework that allows you to do like server-side rendering. Really take full advantage of, of React 
but not, on, not, in, not in the way that we are used to, which we act like everything is client side, and you know, this is like full like server side thing, you know, like fully posting things to your server and processing things server side. So at that server side, they have something called action, and this is where you use GraphQL to query data, provide that to your as, as a you know as a response, and then build your pages. But again, you can build fully like HTML pages. You don't have to. You didn't, you can even you can minimize the uses of the usage of, usage of JavaScript because almost all of the rendering happens server side. So you just provide like HTML pages back to the browser. So you don't have you end up you don't end up with this like gazillion like. Mm, or huge like bundle, JavaScript bundles. Mm, that's it, and just finally, how to integrate GraphQL with other services. One big benefit of GraphQL is that it allows you to interact with different systems. So think about this, what if you can have something like a multiple GraphQL endpoints and you want to have a single entry point, like single GraphQL API call for your different GraphQL API systems. Well, this is something called GraphQL API, I don't know if you are here about this, or GraphQL Gateway API. But, uh, it's, this allows you to have like multiple GraphQL endpoints, meshing them into a single GraphQL and exposing them. There's something called a Apollo Federation that allows you to do that, but you are attached to do every single of your endpoints as a federated endpoint. So enable federation on them so you can federate them. It means if you try to uh, get that an external API that is not federated, then you are in trouble because you cannot, you know, mesh using federation on a, a non-federated API. So again, you can build that yourself. Yep, definitely you can do that. It's kind of hard and it's kind of complicated because now you need to take care of about authentication, authorization, caching, and purging, and purging that. Should be a, there's a better way? Yes, there are better. We are working on a product. It's called Graphobase, which is basically will allow you to do that will allow you to query different GraphQL endpoints, but not only that, you also will be able to query data from Airtable, Google Spreadsheets, any MySQL, Cosway, MongoDB, whatever, uh, any other GraphQL endpoint or REST endpoint. Think about this, you can build an application that is using your, you know, your own dashboard for your data from your you know, employees. Think about this, then you have some like, form submissions on Airtable or from your customers and you have form submissions on Airtable and whenever something, someone report that via those Airtable form submissions, you create a JIRA ticket. And you know, all the data get into Island, so, so you can use a tool like this one, this GraphQL API gateway to mesh all the data together and provide a single API endpoint to query all the data and you're having all the data, it will, you, will be, you will be able to like create your own custom queries there. But long story short, it allows you to mesh data from all different sources, you know, like Airtable, Google Spreadsheet, or any, any GraphQL API endpoint, and provide you with out of the box with purging and caching using UUIDs. You will be caching at the CDN level. It will provide integration with Auth0, so you don't have to worry about user management. You just delegate to, to a tool that is great for doing that. Mm. And again, you, have, you will be able to have access control, you know, you can able to create users, and then this user has access to this query on, on this Airtable, you know, to either read or write on Airtable, or read or write from this GraphQL. You, you will be able to go the that ACL control and turn off mutations. So you don't want people to have access to mutate data on your external systems. Or maybe your external system doesn't allow to do that. So again, if you want to allow to read from that particular system, you will be able to go there, you know. Since everything, we can introspect all that, we can expose you to all that for you on the uh, GraphoBase dashboard. You will be able to go to enable this query to this user or to this particular user role. And again, and we, again, we can do this because again, GraphQL is great to exposing data. It's easy to introspect, provide you with a great developer experience. So you can build products on top of that. And that's about it. Uh, we have a landing page. There's a form you can reach there. Uh, the idea is having a Alpha or pre-alpha for for the Jamstack Jan conference next month. We will see how far we can get on that. So if you're not aware, Jamstack conference is happening in San Francisco in a month. There's a lot of like, you know, Jamstack. The Jamstack world is changing a lot. You know, Jamstack used to think about like, you know, JavaScript, APIs, markup, whatever, whatever, whatever. And now they 
going back to server-side rendering because, you know, life go full cycle to hack, you know? <laughs> like, we haven't seen that, for, you know? It's like going back to server-side rendering. But again, is server-side rendering but taking advantage of APIs, like GraphQL endpoints or, you know, GraphQL gateways. So again, it, it go full circle, but we learn some things during the process by going full JavaScript and, you know, by, and decoupling things. So now that we get back to the original point, we are better because we learn. And then we're you know, going back to server side, but really taking advantage of this you know, GraphQL APIs and yada, yada, yada. I mean, I really take advantage of this decouple, but now in server side rendering, which is, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. And that's it. Questions? We have five minutes. You were able to see those lights and the and videos on I mean on your computer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. You know what and again, if you wanna know more about Drupal and GraphQL, we're we doing a training tomorrow, the Graph Graphy, GraphQL training something, yeah. Tomorrow. Uh nine AM. We'll be speaking it. Probably, you know, because parties enough to buy us. But yeah, that's that's it. I don't know if you have any question. Yeah, what? So for the first iteration, you're going to have writes too? Pardon me? Communication? On the... Uh, GraphQL right back? Yeah, it's the GraphQL Compose module is already released. Uh -huh. uh, it's always base beta. It doesn't provide mutations, but those will be ready by the end of the year or later, the latest. But it's probably coming sooner than that. Because we really want to take advantage of building apps, not only like pulling data and building like sites. We also want to ex expose mutations to be able to write applications like mobile applications or any other like web applications. But the mutations are really, really close to. Graphical interface is also really close. Unfortunately, you know, a big benefit of Drupal is that it's built on Drupal and Form API, but in the same way, a big problem of Drupal is built on Drupal and Form API <laughs> and you know formatting that and making it look nice and, and build things <sighs> like user friendly is hard so that's why struggling with the graphical interface we really want to make easier we don't want to like just have a huge form with gazillions of fields we're trying to figure out a better way to do that it's hard because it's Drupal but it's easy to build but hard to like make it nicer Again, I mean, let me know. If you're thinking during the event, if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to try the module, let me know, and I can probably help you on that. So, thank you. <laughs>